So they say, sure. Glenn Doyle finished her inspection of the public file political sponsorship. Huge checks written to Dolan by politicians for TV time. This smacks of our failure to take Dolan through public service. 18 errands today, Friday, week ago. 60 miles, 6 hours, and 5 legal papers. Franklin is printing 40 sets of Glendora's refutation of Dolan proxy statement. Glendora is working on papers for four United States District Courts. Delaware, Alaska, Detroit, uh, must be the Southern District, Manhattan. Two state judges telephoned Glendora. One yesterday and one today. Oh, and in addition to that, a state judge kissed Glendora on the cheek. So this was state judge week. Uh, state court, uh, the state of New York, County Westchester, Supreme Court, County Court. Forbes says that James Dolan is 174th highest paid CEO out of 800. And he's seventh for the industry. The figures in Forbes should be in the proxy statement. Why aren't they? It's 1.45 a.m. in the morning, Saturday, June 2nd. Glendora and Franklin sent out numerous letters? I guess so. Asking shareholders not going to the June 5th annual meeting to let Glendora vote their shares. Proxy. It has taken days to print 40 sets of 40 pages of Glendora's refuting the Dolan proxy statement. But I think that project is done as of tonight, last night. Uh, we sent copies to eight of the 14 people to whom we send this. Uh, that would be uh, T. I A A Kraft, uh, Fabricant, New York Times, Newsday, Securities Exchange Commission, two shareholders, maybe a couple of others. Sunday, May the twenty seventh, Glendora got three pages of four one one telephone numbers. I do that while the uh, clothes are washing at the laundromat. The name of the laundromat is Soap Opera. <laughs> Cute, huh? Now we have some stats here. 7,298 hours I have spent uh, fighting the cheating and lying and law-breaking of Charles F. Dolan, $18,863. Uh, 76 volumes, 25,594 pages, 7 file drawers, 496 TV reports, 608 mailings, 7 years, 6 months, and 2 weeks. I'm not going to let that man get by with his law breaking. Glendor, uh refuted Callagy, de Blasi, Dirty Dolan. <laughs> uh, unsigned order to rob her of her Cablevision stock because uh, Dolan cannot answer Glendora's questions and because Glendora uh, keeps an eye on his law breaking and reports it, makes, makes it public. And I'm wondering if that's here. Maybe. Dolan is trying to uh, steal Glendora's four shares of uh, Cablevision stock. And he's trying to get the sheriff to seize it, whether, I, whether he gets the stock certificates or not. And 
this order is to be signed by Dippy Dirty de Blasi on June 11th. And I wrote a long paper saying to de Blasi, you'd better not sign this. But then you've done so many dumb things in the past, you're probably dumb enough to sign it this time. But this would help a lot in uh, getting rid of de Blasi. He's teetering on the edge already because of cheating. And uh, so this would just help the cause to get rid of this man as a so-called Supreme Court justice. Wasserman and the New York Law Journal ran away and boomeranged the complaint. Uh, Nexus service by the U.S. Marshal. What's the case of uh, Wasserman in the New York Law Journal? A woman out there named Julia Maid uh, wrote a story about public access, said everything bad about Glendora and the public access movement, and said everything good about Cablevision. What does that sound like to you? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And so I sued them all, the whole gang of cheaters. It was a terrible thing to do to journalism. And uh, I sued them. I sued them in uh, Indianapolis. No, I sued them in Little Rock, United States District Court in Little Rock. And the judge is named George Howard, and he turned out to be a coward, Howard Coward. And uh, he tried to cop out of it by saying that uh, he couldn't understand the complaint, uh, that it had to be rewritten. That's how he tried to get out of it. And so his record, and he's been sued, of course, too. He's been sued in Alaska. And I appealed his order, and of course the uh, Seventh Circuit uh, did the usual cheating that you expect of courts today. And so that's where that, that's the trail of it. But now it's in the United States District Court of Alaska. And I sued all the judges who uh, ruled in uh, their buddy's favor. You know, it's a constitutional requirement for the judges to be impartial. And the judge has to pick jurors, right? How can they judge a juror to be impartial where the judge himself or herself cannot be impartial? Now, Glendora set straight the record in another federal court about Dolan not cable casting non-resident public access. That must refer to Detroit, Glendora versus Gerald Levin. Robert Goldberg wrote the following in the public access movement newsletter. Let me locate that. Spotlight on PA producer Glendora. What's PA stand for? Public access. A chat with Glendora is one of the longest running and most controversial public access programs shown on Long Island. Depending upon whom you speak to about it, you can get extreme reactions of praise or disdain. Let's see why. A chat covers aspects of Glendora and her husband Franklin's lifestyle which is deeply committed to producing public access programming and distributing tapes for access centers in the metropolitan New York area as well as around the country. Another part of their lives is spent in litigating against cable companies, other corporate centers, government agencies, and officials they have encountered, and others. The program's format includes scenes of Glendora and Franklin preparing program tapes, 
their answer machine playing listeners calls other occupants of their residence cats and dogs they have rescued and whom they care for lovingly road shows where tapes or legal papers are driven to their destination while the countryside is videotaped and explained. This isn't usual commercial fare, but it is a slice of Americana that is more relevant than much of the stuff that makes it onto non-public access channels. Technically, the program has problems particularly with sound. These difficulties are common in public access production since shooting programs in a non-studio environment with uncontrolled sound sources to contend with, a limited budget, etc. poses severe challenges. For those who understand the purposes of public access programming and who appreciate the intent and information provided by the producer, such problems are of secondary concern. I highly value A Chat with Glendora and recommend you're watching it on Fridays at 10 p.m. on Channel 71 of the Woodbury System. Other days, times apply elsewhere. While I don't always agree with Glendora's views or actions, I respect her commitment to truth and justice and to fighting for them. Glendora believes in challenging our legal system to dispense justice and right the wrongs. But the purpose of legal systems in the modern world is to interpret and enforce law. Any achievement of justice is incidental. If you doubt this categorical conclusion, consider that, except for the wealthy and large corporations, the civil courts are virtually closed to the public. Glendora being savvy, knows this only too well. Her efforts at litigating the wrongs she encounters are intended to hold a spotlight up to the situation with some good humor. Thomas Jefferson understood a society's need for a free press, that is, one that reports without fear or favor. When he considered newspapers to be more important than government, we are fortunate to have a free press, a chat with Glendora. Uh, with appreciation to Bob Goldberg. That ends uh, memorandum number 19 to my United States District Judge, Sue L. Robinson, United States District Court, District of Delaware. And it was served on Tuesday. Uh, this week I had six or seven legal papers to do every day. Uh, and, I'll, and four of those were Dolan. The Dolan proxy statement, the Dolan public file, the Dolan shareholder fight, uh, and uh, Dolan trying to steal my, uh, my uh, Cablevision shares to get rid of me because I am constantly exposing his lawbreaking. But that's not going to stop me from exposing him. Law breaking. They are the dumbest people. They do the dumbest things. They always have. They've always been ignorant and they've always been arrogant. I think I'm going to read you uh, Glendora's opposition to illegal order, de Blasi's nemesis. This is an order written by liar for hire Robert Callagy.
who was a defendant of mine in several lawsuits. I had sued him several times in his chief law firm, Sally Stevens, Burke and Burke, 230 Park Avenue, Pan Am building. It's raining. Can you hear it? I don't think so. It's raining hard. By the way, what day is this? Saturday, June the 2nd. What time is it? Uh, 2.04 a.m. I was lying in bed. This is sort of a rare thing. And I awakened. So I finished the praying for Friday. And the rule is that you just allow yourself a half an hour or an hour in bed. And if you don't go to sleep, you got to get up and go to work. Because there you're lying there, not doing anything. And in the morning, you're going to be very tired and the work has to be done. So, you get up and you do the work, and usually that makes you pretty sleepy. Okay, says Glendora to de Blasi, and who is John P. de Blasi? Uh, he's a cheater judge uh, in the United States, in the uh, Supreme Court, state of New York, county of Westchester. It means we will not have any Michael Brown lessons because there's so much dirty stuff going on here in the Southern District of New York that we don't have time. It takes all the time to report that, and I refuse to do more than six half-hour programs a week. That's the limit, and this is the fifth one. Let me see if I can find any more of those big checks. I saw copies of these checks, photocopies of checks written by politicians to Charles Dolan. Thomas D. Napoli paid uh, $6,196.58. Brookhaven Town Democratic paid $425. The town of Hempstead paid $39,888 to Dolan for uh, TV uh, advertising time. Uh, Riverhead and Southhold Republicans 
paid uh, $10,567.20 and $1,836. Steve Israel, $20,651.60, this is all Steve Israel, $449.50, $4,100. $17.40, $6,899.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900.50, $6,900
It's done, folks. It's done. Did you know that it was 87 miles down here? And then we left at 7.35 a.m. and got here at 9.45. Horrible tie up on 287, some emergency construction. Then the six programs got done. Three Chat with Lindor and three uh, Michael Brown. All very good stuff, Michael Brown. Patrick Galeno is back from his tour of Rome. And Ron Kuby was the host for the tour. Patrick asked, uh, that Ron Kuby uh, confesses to being a communist. And Patrick asked him, you're a communist, he says, but you're deriving your income from a capitalist organization. And Ron Kuby didn't answer him. I told you Michael Brown's opinion of Ron Kuby, that he sells out to judges. Uh, it's in the upper 90s. Uh, the editing didn't start until maybe 10.30. I had to take care of Rusty. Uh, these are dog days for Rusty. So you have to take good care of him. just on good faith, they could have done that. But you see, Cablevision dehumanizes people. You work for Cablevision, and you lose, you lose your humanization. So the editing was done at 2.30, organize and pack up, and take Rusty for a walk. A hot, hot, muggy, 90, Walk. With a heat factor, they like to add the heat factor, it makes it 101. We're going uh, up Peninsula Boulevard to the southern state and to Huntington. We get the papers signed for August, 41 of them, and to get the renewals signed. trip to Rome and to Spain. So that was good. He did something with his vacation. The last two or three years he just stayed home. Frankly, I'd rather stay home. the painters did. They made the place look so nice on the outside. They painted it white. Windbrook looks very good. So then 
stay east. Did the last two signatures for Elena Sapphire oral argument before the crooked appellate division second department in September. the air conditioning on for Rusty and I think he's more comfortable. Well, gee, mister, I think you could have gone two or three times. Let's go. say that lawyers and judges still don't understand their own business? They don't, they don't treat it as a business. They treat it, they, they treat it, they treat their business uh, at, like it's something different. And they have no understanding of what's going on. They cannot keep taking advantage of their customers, the public, and expect to get away with it. People are going to get sick and tired of it. Yes, so, ALR is there to help. And, and uh, right, they realize now that judges and lawyers are realizing more and more that 
uh, people are sick and tired of it. They're not going to take it anymore. Right. There were two judges and uh, six lawyers at our party, and they want the vote. They want. They're trying to uh, get our vote, and they're at, they're uh, catering up to us. In fact, one of the lawyers that was at the party was a past president of the Bar Association. Oh my! And we did a television show for, with him maybe five years ago. He had no respect for us, and now, <laughs> now they are uh, switched their tune. They realize that yeah, we good. carry a tremendous punch. Hey, that's and, good. And it's and it's going to be more and more. So they're going to watch out. <laughs> our, our next newsletter again is going to expose some of the corruption in Nassau and Suffolk County. They know we have lists, and we spread those things around. We're yeah. not like Newsday. Yeah. Not afraid to uh, show the list. Yes. Uh, it was fun. It was interesting, and to see how much we've come. Hey, to brother, how are you? Hey, yeah. good. How are you? He's another legal reform victim, John. Now you say that Newsday is afraid to show the list. Well, they're afraid to do the stories that uh, mention names. They're afraid of getting sued. We're not afraid of getting sued. We have nothing. They, there's nothing they can sue us for. That's right. Plus, Rush Limbaugh mentioned that. Uh, Newsday is scared because they're losing on their uh, popularity in New York City all their advertisers. Oh. They're losing something like 25 million. The reason they're getting these, this stuff is from other people. Okay, we're leaving the table vision. A lot of big construction vehicles were here this afternoon. And Rusty won't eat. No, too hot. It's 5.21 p.m. We're leaving Woodbury to travel 85 miles. What's that, two hours? Vanessa got the forms, so they're going to cable cast the programs tomorrow, Wednesday. It took from Friday the 3rd to Tuesday the 7th to get the forms to them by U.S. mail. program on there. Poor Carl signed 40 forms. Oh, that's so stupid. Who cares? They're out of their minds. They're raving mad. Talk to Vanessa.
And Rusty seems to be more comfortable. I tied him up to a fire hydrant with a 17 foot chain so he could lie on the cool grass. So, I guess all we have to do is endurance and character and drive 70, 85 miles. Carl has a black Labrador dog. Reminds me of vacuuming. I have a lot of affection for vacuuming. Video tape, Carl. Message to Rich Ruggles. And Sorita, Sorita, those people have to be deaf and it's no wonder what's made them deaf. Five twenty one PM August seventh, two thousand one, Anno Domini Tuesday. Violate the laws for the one hundred and ninth time. If I hadn't been an hour and a half late. has agreed to a referendum on the November 6th ballot after initially rejecting the proposal last month. There's a grandmother here, 85 years old, from Iowa, stole a winning lottery ticket worth $100,000. She stole it from a granddaughter. Mira Stanchel could have gotten up 10 years to the election. The prosecutor's recommended to and returned for a guilty plea, which she made today. So she escapes jail. The granddaughter, by the way, hid that winning Powerball ticket under a bird cage and Stanter replaced it with a losing ticket. Thank you, Grandma. That is low. Well, next, Time Magazine's Lisa Carlin with more about the delay of Mariah Carey's new movie. While Mariah Carey rests, we'll have to wait. Clearview. 6.10 p.m. Giordano, Waterbury Mayor. Anthony Giordano. Public Access Harrison, routed, 
toes. We hate toes. We hate toes. We hate toes. We hate toes. time it takes. mother folks. His mother didn't teach him to stay in line. Me first. Traveled 160. One hour and a quarter. He would Coming into Scarsdale. Now, folks, do not go to Scarsdale. Look at this, folks. At 9.10 this morning, August the 9th, Thursday, I started working on these crazy Cablevision renewal forms. They do not do anybody any good. They have no reason for being. And here it is, 10 after 1. Actually, 20 after 1. That's 4 hours and 10 minutes. And I'd already worked 3 hours on these before today. Uh, starting on the 1st of August. And now I have to go out and find people to sign these. Stupid cable vision. Manhattan Cable TV, Manhattan Public Access, Manhattan Neighborhood Neighborhood Network sends you one sheet and it says if the information on this sheet hasn't changed, do not return it. Now you think cable vision could do anything that sensible and that intelligent? No, not cable vision. They got to do it the stupidest way, the hardest way, the most difficult way, the most expensive way. Stupid Charles Dawn. So I got to go to Austin and have somebody sign that. I got to go to Brookhaven, have somebody sign that. Go to Yonkers and have somebody sign that. And they want identification. Why? Why? New Rochelle. Cross River, got to go to each of these towns and hunt around for a person to sign these things. Yorktown, Haverson, and Port Chester. Franklin is uh, enjoying the comfort of the North Porch. Glenn has to go help Rusty. And Glenn has to mail a chat with one door. It's about 2.05 p.m. August 9, 2013. So what is going on here this morning, Friday, August the 10th, 2001, Anno Domini, at 6.30 a.m. Uh, this is the Notice of Appeal. 
of uh, A.K. Singleton, the United States District Court, District of Alaska, for ruining uh, a brilliant great American fight uh, against the uh, judges. A brilliant, great American fight uh, against uh, judges and other lawbreakers. And I will read it to you after it's uh, printed, labeled, stuffed, folded. There are lots of reports to videotape. First of all, it's 97 degrees. And I think yesterday, uh, August the 9th, Thursday, was the hottest day yet. Humid humans. But first of all, let me find you a joke. Bob said, that before he got married, he had three theories about raising children. Now, he has three children and no theories. And Billy came home from school with all A's on his report card, and his father said, he must get his brains for me, and his mother says, he must, I still have mine. And uh, Harry was told by the doctor, you mustn't shovel snow, you will have a heart attack. So Harry went home and he said to his son, will you shovel the snow? His son said, yes, Dad, I'll start immediately. And Harry had a heart attack. Uh, let's start, do this chronologically. These are the uh, petitions. I got 
uh, five or six pages of these signs, five signatures each page. And it's put out by Elena Sasshauer. The New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct is the state agency charged with the duty to protect the public from unfit New York judges. You have that right. It's in the Constitution of the State of New York. For the past two years, the commission has been sued for corruption. No question about it. Gerald Stern, Lee Kai Clear, and uh, Albert Lawrence uh, in an important public interest lawsuit. Oral argument of the appeal is scheduled for this September in New York's Appellate Division, First Department in Manhattan. Recognizing the potential of this appeal to bring about much needed judicial accountability, people from throughout the state have expressed interest in being present at the oral argument. Some are too far away to make that feasible. Others cannot take time off from work or have family responsibilities and other commitments. The solution is to record the appellate argument so that those unable to attend will have it available to them at a more convenient time and place. Yet the appellate division has no tape recorder, no video camera, not even a court stenographer to record the appeals argued before its judge justices. Thus, notwithstanding the appellate division is a court of record, New York State Constitution Article 6, Section 1B. What it's saying is, is that the Court of Appeals is designated as a court of record meaning it has to have a record of everything that goes on in that court. But the appellate division, first department, breaks the law. Consequently, for the oral argument of the appeal against the commission to be recorded, a special application will have to be made. Please support an, a, such application by signing this petition. We, citizens of the state of New York, hereby petition the justices of New York's Appellate Division, First Department, in support of the application to allow a recording to be made of the appellate argument of the public interest lawsuit. Elena Ruth Sassauer, coordinator of the Center for Judicial Accountability, Incorporated, acting pro bono publico against Commission on Judicial Conduct of the State of New York, scheduled for the September 2001 term. Uh, that lawsuit was filed in 99 New York County, number 108551, and signature, print name, address, and email. So I got them ready to return to Elena. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, the church bulletin for Sunday. Don't forget to pray for our missionaries. Uh, it was at the Dutch Reformed Church. Uh, this church was started by 19 members of the Dutch Reformed Church. That's Robert Schuler's church. Uh, in uh, 1754 or so, they built the first church in 1764 or so, and they started the structure that is there now around 1883 or so. And, uh, wait a second, maybe 1833. And now they are refurbishing it. Uh, the plaster, the paint, all the pews have been moved out. It's a huge undertaking. So we had church under a tent. And it was nice. It was about suffering. Why does God allow suffering? And the woman who delivered the sermon happened to be a Presbyterian minister, and she has had lupus, and much, much, much pain, and much, much suffering. Okay. Put up the CG, Glendora. Put this up, that Nassau County Board of Assessors is mean to old women. This poor woman uh, is having a terrible problem with the Nassau County Board of Assessors. She has asked for a receipt. They said they've given her a receipt, and they don't give her another, and they send her here, there, and everywhere, and she still doesn't get a receipt. 
is the Department of Assessment, NASA County. Doris Walker, I believe, 158 Hendrickson Street, Elmont, New York, 11003. Put up the sign, Nassau County is mean to an old woman. In Nassau County, you don't make Charles Dolan pay $30 million on 1111 Stewart Avenue. You let him get it free. And look what you do to this poor old woman. Shame on you. I'll draw your attention to a publication called uh, Tenants and Neighbors. It's a good uh, organization for you to belong to. If you're a tenant, they have done a great job protecting tenants' rights, and they are the ones largely responsible for uh, the extension of the Emergency Tenant Protection Act uh, six years when the greedy landlords tried to get rid of it. I guess I'm going to uh, come up there because I have to show you close-ups. This flyer is put out by the Hidden Truth. I think it's a great thing to do. And it's so very well done. In this issue, death penalty, MCI. Uh, MCI has admitted that it overcharged the families of prisoners in the USA. And Cablevision control, Napoleonism it's called, dictatorship. And another topic is innocent incarcerated. Oh, that's a horrible, horrible thing. And I know two innocents that the evil gangsters who've taken over the U.S. government in Memphis are trying to incarcerate. You must say prayers for them. That's Bill and Celeste Budrow. This is the Universal Evangelistic Ministries, and they have written to Charles Dolan and told him that they're going to boycott Cablevision and boycott the Wiz and boycott Radio City Music Hall because of his constrictions he's placing on public access. Queen's Public Television, well, they're going to shut down because they're going to change their format. And they're going to not cable cast from, they're going to go dark August 10th through August 26th. They can be sued for that. You cannot let public access go dark. We could own that place. We could own the whole corporation. We could sue these people. Queen's Public Television. Nancy Littlefield. That is bad management. I received four cents dividend from AT&T. Don't knock it, folks. At least AT&T gives dividends, and Charles Dolan Cablevision doesn't. And at least uh, Time Warner gives dividends, but Charles Dolan Cablevision doesn't. Here's another petition that I filled up for Elena Sasa, Commission on Judicial Conduct. They do not do their job. You have a constitutional right to be protected against bad judges who are all over the place.
All right, this paper I will read you. This is to the United States District Court, District of Alaska. And this is a notice of appeal of Singleton's illegal order of June the 25th. Now this was a, a really great cause of action. Let me read you the names of the defendants. This was omnibus lawsuit uh, number two, I believe, and it was filed in the United States District Court of Alaska, as I told you. The first defendant is D.V. Benson, a judge in the uh, United States District Court, District of Arizona, who said that Glendora should go out and sell her 1980 Lincoln and she should sell all of her video equipment so that she could raise $150 for a filing fee uh, in federal court, which you know isn't worth even two cents. Federal courts aren't even worth two cents. And uh, the second defendant is Stephen M. McNamee, who is a judge in Salt Lake City. And what did he do? He went ahead, I believe, and dismissed uh, this case. Of course, he violated all of our civil rights, like Title 42, Section 1983, Civil Rights, 1985, Conspiracy, 28 U.S. Code, 144, 455, Refused to Recuse, 372, 1C, Conduct Prejudicial to the Administration of the Business of the Courts, which is justice, uh, the First Amendment, uh, the uh, Eighth, uh, the Seventh Amendment, jury trial, and so forth, cheating Americans. And McNamee denied Glendora's IFP and then went ahead and dismissed her case. Well, if an IBFP is denied, the case cannot proceed to a dismissal. Uh, Maybe D, uh, excuse me, D.B. Benson is not in the United States District Court, District of Arizona, but District of Salt Lake City. Uh, Gerald E. Rosen, that bum, uh, United States District Judge in uh, Detroit, uh, who uh, ruined uh, Glendora versus Levin, the cause of action that uh, Time Warner and other cable operators uh, do not cable cast non-resident public access, strictly against the law. Defendant James G. Woodward, the clerk at uh, St. Louis District Court who refuses to file papers. Uh, Bruce Wasserman, American Lawyer Media, George M. Dillahay, Lee Jones, Julius E. Mead, all uh, New York Law Journal who act like fugitives when they're sued and did an article on public access, everything bad about public access and everything good about cable vision, so you know what happened there. Uh, the defendants of New York State Court Officer 1763, Joseph Trafficanti, head of the New York State Courts outside of New York City. Uh, the Chief of New York State Court Officers, the Chief of New York State Court Officers in Westchester. Francis Nikolai, uh, Defendant Robert W. Sweet, the perennial worst American whoever sat on the bench. He gets the cake. Uh, Eugene H. Nickerson, right behind him. Gulf Oil uh, for interfering. And Guy Knib uh, with my right to picket. Uh, Danny Chinchilli, New Rochelle Golf on the sidewalk. John Walsh, James McCloskey, Dennis Brown, Pinkerton Detective Services. Uh, John Walsh for tossing my tape recorder into the air and letting it land on the desk. Denise Code, another crooked United States federal judge, Manhattan, another one, Sandra Sotomayor, Kenneth Rudolph and Louis A. Ballone, two crooked judges, state court, uh, county of Westchester, Aubrey E. Robinson, a United States district judge in Washington, D.C., who is deceased, Anita Brody, another crooked U.S. judge in Philadelphia, uh, Joseph Conway, a crooked U.S. attorney in uh, Nassau County, Patrick Quinn, a lying uh, U.S. Marshal deputy in uh, Nassau County, Raymond J. Sullivan, 
a uh, lying and cowardly uh, Pinkerton, Sean McHale, Anthony McHale, Lawrence Parker, these are all to do with Bruiser Ken, Edgardo Ramos, Thomas Kwiatkowski, FBI, Robert M. Levy, these are judges, uh, Joan Azrak, Marilyn Goh, Aileen Ross, uh, Todd Bannister, a liar for hire, for Pinkerton, uh, Harry Rappaport, a lying court stenographer, uh, Edgardo Ramos, another lying U.S. attorney. They got to get their 97-point conviction right, by hook or by crook, and it's by hook and it's by crook. Uh, Michael Goldberger, another cheap U.S. attorney. Nina Gershon, another bad U.S. district judge in the Eastern District. That's all to do with Bruiser Ken. Uh, James Parkinson, Joseph Cloyd, and the Pro Se Office, the United States District Court, Southern District of New York in Manhattan. The Village of Bronxville, Timothy Griffin, George C. McKinnis, Michael Pinto, Sergeant Bunyan. These are all people who violated civil rights and this jerk, Singleton in Alaska, let them get by with it. Michael B. McCasey uh, on the same list uh, with uh, Robert Sweet. Uh, his law clerk Shapiro, his law clerk Moorhead, and Thomas P. Griesa. McCasey is a clone of Griesa. They're both crooked. The New York State Ethics Commission for the Unified Court System, Thomas C. McCurry, David B. Filberoff, Charlotte Moses Fishman, uh, George Bundy Smith, Beverly McQueeny, Janice Howard, Millie Butler. These are all people who violated your right to see the judicial financial statements. A judge in the state of New York has to write down what his financial worth is. It has to be available to the public. But these people deny and violate your right to see it. Ivan G. Seidenberg, Verizon, New York, for uh... hold on. And Verizon are sued, forcing a person to listen to a commercial in her home every time the number she dials happens to be busy. Uh, interrupts a female voice recording, the line is still ringing, but the person you called is not answering. If you'd like to leave your name and number so the person can ring you back for a charge of 75 cents, dial two now. Otherwise, we will continue ringing. The first few 100 times of having to hear this was, ju was uh, tolerable, it is no more. And this crook, Singleton in Alaska, let Seidenberg and Verizon get away with that. And finally, all of the judges of the Sixth Circuit, no, the Seventh Circuit, no, that's Chicago, the Eighth Circuit, that's St. Louis. Uh, Pasco M. Bowman, James B. Loken, Morris S. Arnold, Theodore McMillan, Richard S. Arnold, David R. Hansen, Diana E. Murphy, Kermit E. By. They are all sued for not protecting people against it was Coward. Howard Coward. Coward Howard in uh, uh, Indianapolis who let the New York Law Journal and Wasserman get by with libel and not reporting the news as it happens and making up stories. In other words, uh, dirty journalism. Now I'll read you uh, my notice of appeal against Singleton in Alaska who let all these crooks go. Notice of Appeal with Attachments of Illegal Dismissal by J.K. Singleton of June 25th. Rule 60B motion stops the clock on 30 days to appeal. Notice is hereby given that Glendora hereby appeals to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, for the Tenth Circuit it should be. 
or ninth, ninth circuit. From the judgment, describe it. Illegal, laden with error, abuse of discretion, apostasy, abuse of oath of office, anti-American, derelict, immature, shoddy, a public disgrace. See the attached. And the attached is that if an IFP in form of papyrus is denied, the case can proceed no further. Vandor's motion was to proceed without payment of fees. Since the motion for IFP was denied, the case cannot proceed further. Singleton cannot go on to a dismissal. Singleton should have known he had to grant the IFP. Only then could he dismiss it. Dismissal is a nullity. Next is 28 U.S. Code Section 1404. <coughs> and that's to transfer a case has to be in the interest of justice. And you all know, and you've known for years, that Glendora cannot get justice in the Southern District of New York. Singleton violates all the rights the defendants do, constitutional and statutory. He will be dropped into the July who to sue list. As you know, he was sued in the United States District Court, District of Hawaii. Singleton fails America, as do the defendants. Singleton makes false claims. All of the violations did not occur in New York. Philadelphia is not in New York. District of Columbia is not in New York. Salt Lake City is not in New York. So it is, inter alia. Detroit is not in New York. Phoenix is not in New York. Singleton fails to serve all parties. Singleton did not enclose forms for notice of appeal. Singleton acts irresponsibly and betrays the country. Rule 60 motion, Rule 60B motion, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure stops the clock on 30 days to appeal. We need courts, not old boys clubs. What do you think of Singleton, Orrin? Orrin, Orrin Hatch, this is the Judicial Committee in the Senate. Is he doing his job for the USA? These judges have no individuality. They all mimic each other. And here is my annotation of Singleton's uh, illegal bogus order. I'll have to make that correction. This is appealed not to Second Circuit, but the uh, Ninth. That's California. Oregon and Washington, I believe. Tell me that this new guy, Miller, 
Uh, they didn't 